Hey guys, Krishna Madhav Tuition here and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the Jan 2019 POA Paper 2. When I'm finished with the rest of the solutions, I'm going to put a card up there with a link to the entire playlist and you can also find a link in the description below. And with that said, let's get into the question. So, we're going to take a read, right? So it says here that Caleb owns a beachwear business. On May, 1st of May 2018, his business's cash in hand was 425 and the cash at bank was 1420 During the month of May, the following transactions occurred. Okay, so we're going to take a little scroll down because I want you to see what we have to do. And it says that we have to do a three-column cash book for Caleb for the month of May 2018. And it says the total balance and rule the cash book at the end of the month. So total it, balance it, and draw your double lines. Okay, so let's go back to the top and we're going to start with our opening balances, which the question was so kind as to give us. So we have cash in hand 425 and we have cash at bank 1420. So cash and bank are both assets and assets have balances brought down on the debit side at start. So you're going to see on the debit side here, you have the 425 on the cash and the 1420 on the bank. On the 2nd of May, cash sales 360. So when you sell goods for cash, cash comes in. If cash is coming in, it's increasing. And to record an increase in the asset of cash, you debit the cash, well, you debit the cash book and it will go under the cash column. So we're gonna go on the debit side under cash and you are going to see the 360 being recorded there with the details, of course, being sales. All right, next. Next, we deal with the fifth. <laughs> so bought 750 with an inventory paying by check. So if you paid by check, that's gonna affect bank. A payment means you are spending money and money is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, which bank is, you're going to credit. So on the credit side, on the bank, we're going to record that transaction. So you're going to see 750, right? And the details will say purchases because we bought inventory. Inventory is stock. And whenever you buy stock, you record that in the purchases account. Next, on the 8th, sorry, it scrolled down a little bit, <laughs> right? Spend 150 cash for wrapping paper supply. So we spent cash. So cash is decreasing and cash is an asset. So we need to credit cash for 150, right? And of course it says paper supplies or wrapping paper supplies or just supplies. Anyone you want to put should be fine. Uh, let's scroll on a bit so we can see some more transactions. I guess we could, we could put those top three out of view because we've, we've done all of them. All right, so on the 10th now, it says sold 800 inventory on credit to Jan's company on credit terms 2 slash 10 and slash 30. So first things first, if you sold something on credit, that means to go in the sales journal. And once again, credit sales means cash wasn't involved. So therefore, this is not going to be recorded in cash book. All right now, the credit terms, this is something a lot of kids always ask about. Right? So 2 slash 10 means that if Jans pays you back in 10 days, they get 2% cash discount. If not, they need to pay the full amount in 30 days. N means none, no discount, but you have to pay by the end of the 30th day. Okay, let's check out the 12th. Deposited 500 of the cash on hand into the bank. So in that case, we're taking money. So maybe we had too much money on hand, which is not a safe thing because people can see you have plenty cash and may want to rob you. So you put that cash in the bank for safekeeping. So this is called a contra entry because it's, it's gonna affect cash and bank. One is gonna increase, one is gonna decrease. So we're taking money out of cash to put into bank. So the cash, the cash on hand is decreasing. So on the credit side, you're gonna see under cash 500 because we're taking money out of cash. So cash is decreasing, which requires a credit. In the folio column, you're gonna see a C, which means it's a contra entry and the money is going to bank, right? On the next side, on the debit side, money is going into bank. So guess what's happening to bank? bank is increasing, which means you're going to have to debit bank. So we're going to debit bank for the same 500. You're going to put a C under the folio column because it's a contra entry and you're going to put where the money came from. It came from cash. All right. So again, at this point, I just want to remind you guys, if you have any questions about any of the transactions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will try to get back to you. All right. Also, you can message me on Instagram at adaptuition. Okay. So it says it issued a check to Sand and Surf Inc. in full settlement of amount of 3100 less a 5% cash discount. Okay, so to issue a check means to write a check and to pay somebody with it. So we paid a check to Sand and Surf in full settlement of 3100 So we're going to, 3100 is cleared off, but 
we receive the discount, right? 5% cash discount. So what do we do with that? We find 5% of 3,100, which I believe is 155, and we have to deduct that because what does a discount do? It reduces the amount we have to pay. So 3,100 minus 155, that's 3,000 minus 55. So I think 2,945. So the amount of the check is going to be 29.45, and now it, we we're paying. So once again, if you're paying a check, your account, your bank account is decreasing. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit. So you're going to see 29.45 on the bank, and then under the discount received column, you're going to see 155. And if you add these two figures, you're supposed to get back the original 3,100. Nice. Right. Let's continue. So we have here. Received a check from John's company in full settlement of her account. Ah, right. So this is where the information on the 10th comes into play. So it was 800 on credits. And if they paid, they got 2% cash discount if they paid in 10 days. Did they pay within 10 days? Well, they paid on the 18th, which is within 10 days. So we have to find 2% of 800, which I believe is $16, and subtract it from that. 800 minus 16 is 784. So that's going to go on the debit side because if you receive a check, your bank is affected, it's increasing, and your asset is increasing, which will require a debit. Right? So again, on the bank, because we received a check, right, we're going to record this transaction. So again, 784 because we took out 2% cash discount, discount allowed, by the way. And of course, Jan's company is where the money came from. Uh, next, we have cash sales, 485. So we did a cash sales already. So they're just giving us an extra one, I suppose. So that's going to go on the debit side on the cash, 485. Uh, let's scroll down a bit more to see the rest of the transaction. So that's, that's about it there. Okay, cool. Um, Caleb cashed a check for his personal, oops, sorry, use $200. Okay, so this is drawings. So if Caleb cashed a check, it means Caleb wrote a, wrote a check and he wrote cash on it. He went to the bank, he gave it to the cashier, and the cashier gave him cash. So it's like going to the ATM, except instead of going to the ATM, you go inside the bank and you talk to the cashier. So he's withdrawing cash. Again, pay attention to it. It says for personal use. That means the drawings account is involved here. So bank is decreasing. So you're going to have to credit bank for that amount of 200. And of course, it's going to be drawings in the details because he took it for personal use. Uh, next, paid utility bills. 280 in cash. So we have another cash payment. So that's going to go on the credit side. Right? And it's going to say 280, right? Because remember, if you're making a payment, your cash is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. And it's under the cash column because we paid out of cash. Okay, those are all the transactions. Now, if we take a look, right? Um, I think we have, yeah, well, first of all, the discount allowed and discount received columns are simply totaled going down. They are not balanced off against each other. So don't do that. The cash account, the cash columns, well, you have to balance those. So this side has about, what was that, 11, 1,200. This side has only about, what, 900. Okay, so we're definitely going to have a balance carried down um, on this side here, 340 for cash. All right, but here I'm seeing this one, hmm, that's about 3,900. This side only has about, what is that? 12, 26, 2700. Yes, yeah, so I feel we have a balance carried down on the opposite side there for bank. Yeah, 1191. All right, so <coughs> just make sure you know what was going on there. All right, so when we total up now, so again, once again, you just total the discount columns, right? The cash columns will have the same total because you balance it off. And don't forget to bring down your balance, right? So cash is brought down on the debit side. But bank is brought down on the credit side. Hmm. Now they're going to ask us about that a bit later on. All right. So let's let's scroll down a bit more so we could. Um, so you, you see in the cash book format pass in there, although it's kind of sideways. That's okay. All right. So we just have a, a couple more items here. To be honest, this is these are all that's left in the question. All right. So we could wrap it up soon. That'll be great. So it says give the names of the types of source documents. Caleb should use to make the cash book entries for the transactions which occur on the 16th and 18th of May. Okay, so we need to go back up to the information. Let's do that. So the 16th and the 18th of May, what are the names of the documents? So let's see. All right, on the 16th, he issued a check to Sand and Surf in full settlement. So the document here that he would issue, I mean, well, he issued the check. So the check is the document, but there's something called the check counterfoil or the check stub. All right, so 
a receipt or a check stub. Right, you could also write. So when you pay, you're supposed to get a receipt, which proves that you paid. So you can use a receipt there as well. And in this one here, receive the check from Jan's in full settlement of her account. Well, you could probably issue a receipt there as well. All right, or sales invoice. Um, why do I put sales invoice, boy? Hmm, okay. Well, you see, I don't think the sales invoice should be there. Uh, I have to review that, so <laughs> cool. All right, let's go back down to the next item there. Um, let's see, where is it? C and D. Okay, just these two. So, now, this, by the way, if you disagree with either of those answers for part B, I'm very open to debating it and to discussing it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. All right. So, state one item you would expect Caleb to stock as part of his regular inventory. Well, Caleb is in what kind of business? Let's go back to the top there. Um, one more, All right? A beachwear business. So, what do you think he'll stock? I mean, the list is, is, is a long list. I'm just going to put two easy things. Swim trunks and bikinis. Maybe he might do suntan ocean. Maybe, well, well, sunscreen. Maybe he might do sandals or slippers, beach wraps, hats, all sorts of things, right? Uh, let's go back down to the, la well, to see the last piece of the question, the requirement. All uh, oh, right. Remember I did say we, we, we want to talk about um, this, this balance brought down on the credit side here? Right. What is the significance of the balance brought down on Caleb's bank account at the end of the month? If it's on the credit side, that means that it is an overdraft. And what that means is that you spent more money than you had in the bank account. Right? And an overdraft has to be pre-arranged with your bank because you can't just spend more money than you have and expect the bank to pay because you have to pay them back with interest. So it has to be a pre-arranged facility. Okay. All right. So ladies and gents, that has been the solution for question one for the Jan 2019 PUA paper two. If anybody has any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.